Hello, the name of our next book is called Thanksgiving at the Tappleton by Eileen Spinelli, illustrated by Marianne Kaka Leffler. Thanksgiving at the Tappletons was always a big day. Thanksgiving at the Tappletons met, of course, the Tappleton family. Mr. Tappleton, Mrs. Tappleton, Jenny Tappleton, Kenny Tappleton, and Grandmother and Grandfather Tappleton, and Aunt Hedda and Uncle Fritz, and most certainly, of course, the turkey and the trimmings. It was still dark when Mrs. Tappleton lit the oven and took the big turkey out of the refrigerator. Just then, someone knocked at the kitchen door. It was Mike the Milkman. Good morning, Mrs. Tappleton. I thought you might like some eggnog for the holiday. As Mrs. Tappleton reached for the eggnog, the turkey slipped from under her arm. Now, on a warmer day, this might not have been a problem. But this Thanksgiving day was quite cold and the step was covered with ice. Before she or Mike could even think, the turkey had slithered into the yard. Get it, shouted Mrs. Templeton. Mike reached out, but the turkey skidded past him through the gate and into the street. Hurry, screamed Mrs. Templeton. Stop that turkey. The milkman chased the turkey. Mrs. Tappleton chased the milkman, and the turkey slid down the hill into the pond. Splop, splash, it bubbled out of sight. When Mr. Tappleton came down to breakfast, he took a long sniff. I don't smell turkey, he said to his wife. Of course you don't smell turkey, she replied. You have a cold. I don't have a cold, he insisted. Mrs. Tappleton shook some pepper in the air. Her husband sneezed. See, she said, you do have a cold. After breakfast, Mr. Tappleton put on his coat and scarf and hat and gloves. I'm going to the bakery to buy our pies. Mrs. Tappleton handed him his boots. Where are these, she said. I know for a fact it is quite slippery out today. Sims Bakery was so crowded, the line reached out onto the sidewalk. Mr. Tappleton hated to wait in long lines, so he went to the diner for a cup of coffee. By the time he got back, the long line was gone, and so were the pies. No pumpkin, no mince, no rhubarb, Nothing. Mr. Tappleton was afraid to go home with nothing. Two boxes tied up with string, please, he said. Mrs. Sims stared at him. You mean two empty boxes? That's right. My, they feel light, remarked Mrs. Tappleton. Certainly they are light, retorted Mr. Tappleton. Mrs. Sims prides herself on how light her pies are. Mrs. Tappleton set the table. She called to her son. Kenny, you make the salad. There's lettuce in the crisper and carrots and radishes too. Kenny's face grew pale. Just yesterday, he had emptied the crisper and fed all the vegetables to the rabbits in Mr. Butterworth's class. How could he tell his mother? He couldn't. So he covered the empty salad bowl with aluminum foil and stuck it in the back of the refrigerator. When the others went to pick up the relatives at the train station, Jenny stayed behind to mash the potatoes. Every year, this was her job. She loved it. This year, she thought, I'll make them even better. I'll use the blender. Just as Jenny flicked on the switch, the phone rang. It was her best friend, Nora. If there was one thing Jenny loved to do better than mashed potatoes, it was talk. 
they talked and talked and talked to Nora and she might still be talking today had it not a wet glump of something hit her on the back of the head. She turned to see what it was. Splat! Another glump hit her in the face. The blender was going wild. The mashed potatoes were flying everywhere. Without even saying goodbye to Nora, Jenny hung up the phone, scrubbed her face, and wiped mashed, potato mashed potatoes from nearly everything in the kitchen. She finished just as the, as the others came back. Uncle Fritz patted his stomach. I'm hungry, he said. Grandfather Tappleton laughed. I'm as hungry as an elephant. Everyone sat down at the table. It was a Tappleton tradition for a grandmother to say the Thanksgiving prayer. As soon as the turkey is ready, she smiled. I'm as hungry as two elephants, said Grandfather. Mr. Tappleton went to the oven. I'll carve the turkey now. He opened the oven door. The turkey is gone. Mr. Tappleton searched on the table and under the table and in every kitchen cabinet. He looked into the sink and in the broom closet. I can't find the turkey anywhere. Mrs. Tappleton took a deep breath. She told them how their fine turkey had slipped out the door and down the steps and across the yard and through the gate and down the street and plop, splash into the pond. So much for the turkey, said Uncle Fritz, and his stomach rumbled a little louder. Never mind, said Aunt Hedda good-naturedly. We'll fill up on trimmings. I'll get the salad, Jenny announced. Then Grandmother can say the prayer. Jenny set the bowl on the table and peeled off the aluminum foil. Everyone stared at the salad that was not there. I fed the rabbits at school, confessed Kenny. Uncle Fritz looked downright gloomy. So much for the salad. His stomach rumbled again. I am as hungry as three elephants, sighed Grandfather. Kenny jumped up. We'll have Jenny's mashed potatoes. He brought the pot from the kitchen and lifted the lid. I was on the phone, said Jenny meekly, and the blender went wild. So much for the potatoes. Uncle Fritz's stomach rumbled even more. I'm as hungry as four elephants, Grandfather declared. The pies, cried Mrs. Tappleton. I'll get the pies. I'll say grace as soon as the pies are cut, Grandmother smiled. Mrs. Tappleton brought in the boxes, set them down, and untied the string. You brought home two empty boxes, she glared at Mr. Tappleton, who covered his ears. Five elephants, groaned Grandfather. The dining room was quiet. Everyone looked down at the empty table. Uncle Fritz muttered something, but it could not be heard above the rumble of his stomach. A tear rolled down Jenny's cheek. No Thanksgiving dinner, she sniffled. Nothing to say a prayer for, sighed Kenny. Grandmother smiled. Of course there is something. There is more to Thanksgiving than just turkey and trimmings. And then Grandmother Tappleton asked everyone to bow their heads and to hold hands around the dining room table. And this is a Thanksgiving prayer that she said. Turkeys come and turkeys go and trimmings can be lost. We know, but we're together. That's what matters. Now what's served upon the platters, not what's served upon the platters, amen. That was a wonderful prayer, said Aunt Hedda. Mrs. Tappleton jumped up. We have liverwurst and cheese in the refrigerator. I'll help fix the sandwiches, offered Mr. Tappleton. Jenny wiped her tear away. I'll get the pickles. Kenny laughed. I'll open a jar of applesauce for dessert. And so the Tappletons had their Thanksgiving af dinner after all. Uncle Fritz's stomach stopped rumbling, and Grandfather Tappleton ate enough liverwurst to feed six elephants. In fact, everyone had plenty to eat, but most of all, they had each other. I hope you enjoyed our story, Thanksgiving at the Tappletons. All right, boys and girls, thank you for listening. Bye.